Hey guys, Mr. Thompson here. I have another game that I want to show you how to play this evening. This one has a couple different ways in which you can kind of engage in some fun crafting at home. And then again, another really easy game to figure out how to play, but it has a lot of fun strategies. So let's check it out. So I have it set up here. This game is called the Royal Game of Ur. This is a board game we have that comes out of Mesopotamia. And this is believed to be the oldest board game around, at least probably the oldest board game that we have uh, some clear artifacts for. So the artifacts that we have of this game is first off the game board here, which uh, we've discovered many um, <clears throat> examples of this board. And with the board would usually be these flat um, stone pieces. Uh, we have seven for one player, so this is going to be a two-player game like some of the others we've seen. So seven pieces of one color, seven pieces of the other like I have here. And how you play this game is two players are taking turns. I've drawn an example of the game board here. So you know, if you obviously don't have a bunch of wood blocks, this is another game where you can easily draw on a blank piece of paper to play. But you and your opponent are taking turns going down the outside of this track and then racing down the inside lane and then coming back around on the out and trying to be the first player to get all seven of your pieces onto the board, work them through, and then get off the board. And your opponent is doing the same thing, but on the other side. So this is a kind of a race game. You're racing against each other. There are some elements of backgammon to it, um, if you are familiar with that game. But again, if you have you know some spare pieces that you can kind of make a 3D board, you know it's very fun to decorate. If you look at pictures of them, they're very ornate. Um, or if you want to just draw something up on a piece of paper, either way works. So along with these artifacts, what we have also found is they would have a collection of usually three or four of these pyramid shaped dice. Now these are um, three sided pyramids so there is no four sided square base. It's a triangular triangle on each side so that there are four um, points. And the way that these dice would work is two of the points uh, would have a little white dot on the top and the other two would be blank. And you would roll these dice, see how many uh, white tops you would get on them, and that's how many moves you can make with a die. Another way, so not a lot of people have um, a bunch of D4s lying around. So another, and what I think is kind of a funner way to uh, set up and figure out how you get to move in this game, is we also have examples of these decorated sticks found with these game boards. Uh, these kinds of sticks are also used instead of dice in another ancient board game called Egyptian Senate. And what you do with these is you just find some popsicle sticks, or if you have any other kind of like a flat stick, leave uh, one side kind of white or light, and then the other side dark. You just want them to be very distinctive. Now again, you could uh, be a lot more creative than I am, and you could decorate both sides of these, you know, put designs, drawings, um, words, whatever you want on them. You don't have to have just black and white like I do. But you take uh, four sticks, you bundle them up, and then you drop them on the ground, and you count how many sticks come up on the dark side, how many are on the light side and depending how many show up dark is how many moves you get to make so three with a potential of four being the most moves you could make or potentially losing a turn not getting to move anything at all now if this seems like a game that you might be interested in but you don't have popsicle sticks you don't have d4s you know if you can find just a standard dice um, or a die around anywhere. Just a simple roll of a single die and one through six uh, makes this game very easy to play as well. So uh, that's kind of uh, some basic setup. Let's take a look real quick at how this game is uh, actually played then. So I'm going to go ahead and put, before I do, 
on my wood board and on the wood one, the only um, decorated squares you need to be aware of are these what we call rosette ones. Uh, so you see there's one on each side here, one in the middle, and then another one on either side. So I've marked each of those on my paper copy of the board. So uh, we're going to go over what those mean. If you're making your own board, uh, those are the only ones for this basic setup. Now, Ur is a game that's been around for literally thousands of years. Um, it's written about in cuneiform, uh, the oldest known written language in other languages. So there's actually a few different ways in which this game can be played. What I'm going to be uh, showing you guys is the very basic. This is kind of the base way in which uh, experts believe this game was played. So you have two players, you have your board in front of you. What you are going to do, and we're going to go ahead and use the sticks because I think part of this game, part of the fun is making your own uh, sticks to throw. So this side is going to go first. You're going to take the sticks, drop them, and I've got two dark sticks, which means I can pick one piece to move two spaces. So you start on this bottom corner, one, two, I place my piece there. It's now the gold player's turn. So we're going to pick up the sticks, drop them, they get a two as well. So now they come in on this opposite side, one, two. So you notice each side has their kind of own lane that they get started with, um, where you're kind of a little more protected as we'll see. So dark side roll, two. Now I have some options here. I could move this piece two, or, well, I guess I can't put another piece on. You can't land on your own pieces. So all I can do is move forward two, one, two. Now, we've come to these rosette squares. If you ever land a piece on one of these rosettes, and there's three of them for your side, so you have two on your personal lanes and one in the middle, if you ever land on one of those, you get to go again. Plus, if you have a piece on this rosette, it can never be taken off the board by the other player, and we'll show you how that works. So I've landed there, I get to go again, and I've rolled a one. Now, I could either move this piece forward one into our now racing lane, or what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move one new piece onto the board, because remember, you're trying to get all seven out. So let's have gold player go now. So three, let's see, I'm going to have them go into the lane with this piece. One, two, three. So now they're in the lane because they're in this middle row. If another player lands on that piece with one of their rolls, that piece is going to get removed from the board. So let's see if I'm lucky enough to roll to uh, be able to demonstrate that. I've got a three, can't move that piece. I could move a new piece on, which I think I'll do. One, two, three. Gold player's turn. They got a three as well. One, two, three. They landed on the Rosetta, so they get to go again. And it would probably be in their interest to keep that piece there since it is protected. One. So they're going to take a piece and put it onto the board. So now the dark pieces turn. Rolled a one. So I'm going to move that piece onto the board. So this goes, as you can imagine, goes back and forth, so on. As pieces are moving, they're moving up. You're moving a piece onto a board. But let's say now as pieces are moving in this middle lane, if this gold piece were to roll a three, one, two, three, if they land on a square occupied by the opponent, that piece gets taken off completely and you need to start all the way over. So you progress downward, down the lane, then off to your side. So for the dark one, they would come around this way. 
and off to their side. And then you need an exact roll to get off. So here I would need a roll of two and I could go one, two, and I'm off the board. If I was here, I'd need a roll of one, roll of three, roll of four, so on. You need a perfect roll to get off the board. Once you get all seven of your pieces off, you are the winner. So one uh, final thing to think about with the Royal Game of Ur before I finish up here. Uh, this is, like I said, a very basic game. You know, you're moving pieces around the board, basically staying on your own side, trying to get them off. This middle row is the only area where you're having interaction with your opponent, being able to land on their piece, make them start over as you continue on. Um, it's a very fun game. You can have a lot of uh, good strategy of when do you add pieces onto the board, when do you start moving onto the center, when do you move your piece off this center Rosetta, because remember, it's protected there. Uh, getting your pieces to the end and getting that perfect roll to get them off. There's a lot you can do with these basic rules. But as you see with my decorated board here, there's a lot of different symbols on each of these other squares. Uh, if you check out online, there are a lot of different variants to this game uh, that deal with each of these squares even having uh, special powers to them, uh, special ways in which you play. There are variants that involve uh, stacking your own pieces on top of each other on squares as you're moving. Um, there's a lot of different things. The thing about the Royal Game of Ur is it's been around so long that every region it popped up in, uh, ancient Rome, Egypt, the Middle East, parts of Asia, they all had their own variants, their own ways of playing. But this was the basic game of the ancient world. And from the basic version that we believe is how you play that I've shown you. From there, there are these different alternative ways to play that make it more complex. There's ways to engage in uh, gambling and turning it into, you know, ancient uh, Mesopotamian drinking games. There's all kinds of things that go on with it. So one of the really cool things about this game as well, and one of the things I do with my students when we learn about the Royal Game of Ur is there's nothing that says you can't take this and come up with your own game of it. Come up with your own rules, your own style of how you would like to play this. Uh, one of the things about being an archaeologist and discovering you know, an artifact about this is you need to make your best guess, your best hypothesis on how this game was played, test it out with all the available information, and see if it works. So, guys out there, I hope you have fun uh, trying out. I hope you uh, take some time to try playing a game or two of the Royal Game of Ur. I do not think you'll be disappointed. It really is a lot of fun. Uh, so until next time, take care and stay safe out there, guys.